$341 for a leg, $210 for skull bones, $900 for a torso. That's how much Victor Carl Honey was worth to a medical school in Texas. Without his consent or his family's knowledge, his body was frozen, cut into pieces, and sent out across the country after he died. We learned about Honey because he was on a long list of unclaimed bodies acquired by that med school. And we wanted to know how he, a brother, a father, and a veteran who earned burial with military honors, could be treated this way. I think they think, homeless black man, you know, he ain't got no family, they don't care about him. You were wrong about this one. Honey died alone at a hospital in Dallas in September 2022. After a social worker there couldn't find any family, he was sent to the medical examiner, where an investigator struggled to find or make contact with Honey's family. And so, less than a month later, the search was ended. Even though Honey's son shares the same first and last name and lives in the Dallas area, Honey was deemed unclaimed and brought to the University of North Texas Health Science Center, where he was dissected and studied by medical students and companies. This isn't new. The unclaimed dead have long been used for medical teaching and research. In the 1800s, body snatchers dug up the graves of the poor and formerly enslaved and sold them to med schools. Eventually, states made it legal for schools to train and experiment on unclaimed bodies instead. But today, much of the medical community has moved on from that practice, treating human bodies with the same dignity as living patients, meaning consent is needed for what happens after death. But this med school in Texas did the opposite. More than 2,300 unclaimed bodies have been given to them since 2019, including honeys. And a big reason why is money. Burying and cremating thousands of unclaimed bodies is expensive for local medical examiners and coroners. The bodies are disproportionately black men, and many are mentally ill and homeless, often making it far more difficult to reach next of kin, who would otherwise pay the bill. By sending out body parts and renting school facilities to outside groups that wanted access to their supply of bodies, the program helped bring in $2.5 million a year to the school. But when we reached out to dozens of companies, teaching hospitals, and med schools that leased bodies from the Health Science Center, 10 of them didn't know that some of those bodies were unclaimed. First time I heard about it was when NBC News contacted me. It says donated on the paperwork. What did you think that meant? That they donated their bodies for this purpose. Are you going to change course in any way now knowing what you know? Yes, absolutely. We need to know exactly who consented, I would like to know that. As we investigated this story, the Health Science Center defended its practices, arguing that using unclaimed bodies was essential for training future doctors. But after we shared our detailed findings, the program was suspended, its top officials were fired, and an internal investigation was launched. However, that doesn't change the immense impact it already had on unclaimed people like Honey, who was dissected with scalpels and bone saws and distributed on the open market. Over a period of seven months. Honey's right leg was used in a training at the Health Science Center. Bones from his skull were shipped to Fort Sam Houston, and his torso was sent to Pittsburgh. When the med school was finished with the bodies, they were cremated, even as some families were searching for them. NBC obtained government docs and data on the acquisition, dissection, and distribution of unclaimed bodies by the Health Science Center over a five-year period, and we found 12 cases where families found out weeks, months, or years later that their loved one was provided to the med school. Five of those 12 families learned what happened from us. Honey's son learned of his death a year and a half after it happened, through a chance encounter with a stranger who was struck by how similar their names were. But it was one of our reporters who broke the news of how Honey's body was used, and his family was appalled. The 10 years we were married, he never wanted to be an organ donor. We talked about it. His son said that he might have been open to donating his dad's body for research, but that he should have been asked. In June of this year, Honey's family was finally able to lay him to rest in a burial with military honors. 622 days after he died. You would think in this day's time, this doesn't happen here in America. But yeah, it does. It did.